if I sorry for not introducing you before <laughs> when we started. I should have. I should have done it. But uh, fire resistant podcast. You didn't? No, I didn't. I'm a terrible okay. host. Uh, do Aaron, I get to read? Do, do, I, do I get to re say my name? Oh yeah, you should do that, huh? I, okay, man, I was tell off me. my game today. But Just uh, tell me, you can edit. You can edit this together, so we can do like a long pause, and then you can say, uh, "Hi, this is blah blah, and this is Fire Resistant Podcast," and then let's talk about the movie, and then <laughs> put it at the beginning of the podcast, and no one will know anything. That's. I'm just gonna put you saying that at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you want me to do my fire resistant podcast thing? Sure. Fire resistant podcast. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. Fire resistant podcast. And Alan, I seen that. Hard rain. 1998, Christian Slater, Morgan Freeman. Uh, Aaron, you asked me to watch this movie because this is your all-time favorite movie. Uh, I didn't say it was my all-time favorite movie, you, but you're welcome for watching this movie. You, you said that this is going to change my life, that I'll be a different it person did your life. after watching you this. You are a different person. <laughs> you are a different person. Don't lie to your fans. This movie was... <laughs> As bad as some of the punishment movies Taylor has made me watch. Really? You think it was that bad? It was terrible. Oh, it was so bad. <laughs> so when I, when, when I say, do you think it's that bad? I'm saying that as in like hard rain. Okay. So if this is the upper echelon of good action movies, there's like a middle and then there's like a small middle to lower. That's uh-huh. where I think hard rain is. So I, I agree with you. I think there's like levels of action and there's like great. That is just like you, you get, get you pumped up and like you're excited. And then there's like that middle ground where you're like, you know, what, I'm, this is worth watching. Then there's the bad, which this is. This is just bad. It doesn't do anything right. Then there's the crazy, which is below bad, but it circles back to being good because it, the spectrum is a circle, not a not a line. So it's crazy good. And this is so close to getting there, but the action is terrible. I can tell you that this movie did at least a couple of things right. Number one, Bob Hodgkins was in this movie. Bob Hodgkins from uh, Super Mario Brothers? Yeah. Who was he? Right. Right. And that, wasn't that who that was? No. The, guy that, the, the guy, old guy? The guy that, like, yeah. No, that was... Um, I mean, am I getting my old guys mixed up? Uncle Charlie was Edward Answer. Oh, well, Edward Answer, same thing. <laughs> they, did, they did that right by he, having him in the movie as well. The, oh, man. The, the dialogue yeah, right. is terrible. Like, yes. everything. Honestly, I felt like I wrote this movie. Everything was, like, so forced. And, like, there was yeah. no nuance to anything. And everyone. The biggest sin. <clears throat> The biggest issue this movie has is that every character on screen has the view or the understanding of the audience. So if something happens that the audience is aware of, the characters (laughs) now all know it as well. When there's no reason for that to happen, there's no, they should not know what's going on, but they're all, you know, just, what is it? Omniscient, right? They're they're aware of everything that's happening and it's yeah. just like so frustrating it's like what not not every character well yeah there, there are there are there in the 90s there's always a group of people whether they're bad or good there's always uh, a leader i wrote this down there's a leader there's a tech guy there's a muscle and there's a dumb guy yeah there's always a dumb guy so which and, where does the uh, the poet guy what's he he's the muscle I, I i put him as the muscle guy yeah because even though he really didn't do anything muscle wise, that was supposed to be his. He was supposed to be there for that reason to yeah. to punch somebody. I thought that and, uh, I thought him quoting scripture was a weird choice. Yeah, <laughs> no, and then and then he was like, "Man, that was Springsteen." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like, "I ran out of Bible quotes." Yeah. <laughs> um, oh yes, this movie, man. <clears throat> you got to give it credit for. Uh, even though I thought it was Bob Hodgkins, this other guy, uh, this Edward uh, Anzer, right? Yeah. And then the and then the twist. Yeah, he I mean, was... we'll get to that. But, but but did you see that twist coming? Where the cops were like, "Screw it, we're going to go for the money." Um, 
I didn't see it coming because I didn't invest emotionally into this movie at all because there was How no there was no logic behind anything <laughs> that was happening. So it was just like aliens could have been the reason rain was coming down. I wouldn't have been like, oh, wow, that's crazy. You know, like it was just no, there was just nothing. Nothing was built. Nothing was consistent. And they just, they're like, all right, uh, let's change who's the bad guy now. You know, you ever play that acting freeze game where you and another person are doing a role or like a scene and then someone says freeze and someone else steps in and then starts a new scene. You know what I'm talking about? They did that in this movie. They're like, all right, stop. You're now the good guy, Morgan Freeman. The cops, you're now the bad guys. <laughs> and go. <laughs> Can you believe that Morgan Freeman was in this movie? Morgan Freeman. Like at what, he's like, like at what 65 point? years old in this movie. And he looks like he's 25. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. He was so old when he did, uh, I think I believe Shawshank was his first movie. He was like in his 40s and his 50s or something like that. And uh, didn't have any acting credit other than like theater before that and got into right. it and became this huge star that we all know now. But he looked like a young guy in this. He didn't look his age at all. I think because the, the rain was constantly falling on, falling on him. Yeah. So he had the, the glistening you mean skin the, look. The hard rain was falling on him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The hard rain was falling on him <laughs> the entire movie. <laughs> now, I don't know if I missed it. And I feel like I didn't. But was there any explanation why there was so much rain? No, there was the rain. The rain was the um, was the uh, the context of the movie, the background noise that that pushed the narrative of the story. Yeah, because anytime anytime they needed to push the narrative of the story, the rain and the water made it pushed it forward, which was crazy because yeah. there was no consistency consistency with how much water was in any one place right because water there was there was no there was <laughs> water it's when the when the guy opened up the dam and the water came down mm-hmm. the, the the water rose yes. they were consistent with that but so there's one scene where he is in the prison right and the water is filling up you know mm-hmm. inches every second and he's about to drown but then they right. cut back to i want to say it's the church where the water is at their ankles. So one, you know, three blocks away, the water has risen 10 feet. In the other place, it hasn't risen at all. That's not how water works. Water would rise consistently across the whole town. Not- she had sandbags and water things <laughs> shooting the water but she out. Had, don't she, don't she had, question this movie. <laughs> she had three feet of sandbags, <laughs> not 10. She didn't have a whole like super tower of sandbags. <laughs> She it was just like <laughs> like we need a lot of water over here. Let's uh, let's make the second story flood, and then they go somewhere else, and they're like able just to walk around on the ground floor. There's just no, there's no, <laughs> there's just it doesn't none of it makes sense. But uh, why don't you break down the plot? What's the how does it start off? So <clears throat> there's rain. There's hard it. hard rain. <laughs> so before, if you don't mind, let me let me tell a real quick story with okay. the with this movie. So when this movie came out, even though it doesn't seem like it, it the movie's rated R, and I'm still wondering why it was rated R because yeah. I don't think they really used any there's, any sort of profanity or anything like that. There's really that much in this movie. There's no nudity, no profanity. Uh, there's some killings, but they're not they're not right. violent. There's, it, well, there, there, mo- there's one there's one f word in the movie and that's when the old man talks to betty white the way that he does but other than that there's really not that much profanity so uh and and the me bringing that up the fact that it's uh rated r plays into the story so uh i i wanted to see this movie <laughs> i was not uh 17 at the time and neither was my friend dave oh you <laughs> we, and dave yeah, me and Dave, we went to we went to go to this movie, and uh, at the time, our theater had a guy standing at every rated R entrance because he they were so they were trying to keep people that were not supposed to be in there out, right? So we tried to go, <laughs> we tried to go in, and the guy's like, uh, "Your tickets are for I can't rem- I can't remember whatever movie came out that weekend," and we we're like, "Crap, how are we going to get in the movie?" So we walked past him to go to the 
bathroom. And when he checked the tickets of, of some other people that were trying to get in, we, we like ran in the theater, <laughs> we ran in the theater. We watched the movie. Right. And then when we were coming out, he was standing right there, not waiting for us specifically, yeah. but he was there and he looked at us and he goes, you two did not have tickets to this movie. <laughs> and how, he's like, how and, old and were he you? Was, uh, let's see. This movie came out 98. in 98. So I, I think I was, I had to be 16. Okay. 16 because you have to be 17 to get into a rated R movie. So that, that, so basically uh, this guy was waiting for us and then, or not waiting for us, but he was, he recognized us cause we tried to get in and uh, he was like, you wait right here. I'm getting the manager. And then like, as soon as he turns back, you know, I was way skinnier. I was in cross country back then. We, my friend Dave and I just took off running as fast as we possibly could. <laughs> and this dude chased us out into the parking lot, trying to get us. <laughs> it was, it was so crazy when we got down. When he, when we got to the exit door, he stopped, but yeah, we ran all the way out to the parking lot. We, we, we risked our lives to watch this movie. <laughs> we risked our lives. And for oh. you to just toss it away like that. It was so bad, man. Did you like it at yeah. the time? Were you excited about it? Um, it I can tell you that my 16 year old self was, <clears throat> I, I, I enjoyed this movie. Now uh, I enjoyed the movie for, for a different reason though. I enjoyed the the twist and the the gunfighting in the movie. Gotcha. But that was that was sixteen year old Aaron. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Me, me, the the we've gone forward as far as storytelling goes a little bit and action sequences and going back and watching this movie, I was like, oh geez. (laughs) I would like to point out that Terminator Two came out six years previous. Came out six years before this movie, so we had movies like Terminator Two coming out. (laughs) we have movies so, like demolition man coming out did you ever see that so of course i did <laughs> demolition man I actually just re- the best. I actually I actually just referenced that movie today oh it's so good uh then we have this coming out right before uh the matrix you know the matrix i want to say came out in 99 so this came out the year it before did, the matrix it, it, did, it did come out in 99 uh so this is the quality this this movie this youtube first time you know filmmaker movie came out in between all this nationally you know in in theaters it's so bad the writing is terrible the action is terrible and they cut these uh like almost like jump scares like with the cow floating at him with the the sound yeah and they don't hit at all because the images versus the sound and the timing and just everything None of it works to like get you off your edge because the sound doesn't get louder. You have right. your, your background music, which is just like, you know, a decent level. And then they have these intense sounds, but the level doesn't change. <laughs> so you just have this like, you know, like there's no, I would, have, I would have to say this movie without looking at his IMDb. Mm. I think this is the movie that killed Christian Slater until Mr. Robot. So this movie came out I in 1998 and he didn't really do anything until like 2015 or 14 with Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot is great, by the way, if you haven't watched it, I've it only is. watched the first yeah, season. I love it. Um, but, Oh yeah, it gets, it gets way better. Does it? The, yeah. Uh, so Christian Slater in this, not very good. Is, but he is the typical nineties, good guy yes. he has to wise crack like when they're in this when and they're in the uh, sense. car <laughs> none of it when, makes sense when he's in the car he's like oh this is my car from high school <laughs> it does so stupid <laughs> or or when him and morgan freeman are at the church and he's <laughs> like i saw jesus yeah which again it's, <laughs> it's a joke only for the audience the characters would all be like right what are you talking about huh <laughs> Why, how did yeah. you see jesus here you know what i mean like and there's just the the final one was the most offensive to me. I'm trying to remember when they're on the boat and he's telling her, oh, that's what it was. He, they're on the boat and she's like, did my church survive? And he's like, yeah, mostly, you know, the the hard rain seemed like it helped with the fire. And she's like, fire? She's like, did it, was it a lot of damage? It's like, no, nah, it wasn't a lot of damage. That's why they felt confident enough to drive their boats through the stained glass. Yeah. 
then it yeah, cuts to her face and then it freeze frames just whoa. That's 90s that's like 90s <laughs> action flick and on a joke people walking out of the theater laughing because her church got destroyed at the look on her face and then they cut yeah. into they cut into third day i want to say it was I don't know. I, I turned it off as soon as the movie was over. With. <laughs> the, the, this was, the, this was the, not a good memory. This was not a good drive down memory lane for me. The credit song was, I believe, Third Day. And it was all about uh, the Noah being in the boat, <laughs> is what the song is. That's funny. Rain, rain. Like, I, wa- I watched it, and I watched it, and as soon as it ended, I was like, all right, X. <laughs> It's so bad, man. So why don't you break down the plot? What, what's going on? Okay, so the plot is there's rain going on, of course. The yes. movie's called Hard Rain. <clears throat> Christian Slater and his uncle are taking money out of this town, and apparently prior to that, they had gotten money from several towns because there's several towns flooding. Morgan Freeman and his group of bad guys show up to rob christian slater and his uncle now I, ensues from there one of the things i was confused about i don't know if you have an answer to this did mm-hmm. they know that the rain was going to cause them to take everything and so they planned it were they planning this heist without the rain originally and they're going to do it was it just an opportunity and they contacted the uncle i was so confused about how they planned this because everyone was ready to go but I feel like a right. flash flood like this, you would not be able to, you know, anticipate. Well, I uh, basically from everything that Morgan Freeman told us in the movie, basically uh, when the opportunity arose with the rain, uh, the uncle called him and said, hey, come steal this money from me. And then we split it and we all live happily ever after. Okay. So now as now as far as them crashing in the water the way that they did, where they crashed, all that, I I I, I don't know. That was just happen chance. I don't, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Because because the introduction to that group of guys is they were at a bar talking about or, or not supposed to be talking about money, waiting for the phone call. Gotcha. Because that that was my confusion. Because like a flash flood, like a flood of that magnitude. I don't think you would be mm-hmm. able to predict how bad it was going to be and people still be in town. Right. You know what I mean? Like but, that if the, it flooded, you know, 20 feet <laughs> of the town, like that town is destroyed. There's not like just coming right. back tomorrow. Right. But, uh, but what they said, they had hit several towns before that. So the, there was a bunch of rain and they, we can just assume that there was a prediction that, it was going to flood the town. So they need to get all the money out of all the towns to get to the point where, um, you know, to get the money to the banks. So that way they're protecting their money. Yeah. So you think it was, they knew probably a week in advance and they set up this plan with the uncle. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cause I, that, I mean, the, the, that's, that's an assumption, right? They didn't say that or anything. They didn't like, it wasn't explicit at yeah. any point. It was just kind of well, like, I, 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 well, what's his name? Morgan Freeman said that he knew uh, the uncle for a while. He knew his middle name. He knew how long he was married to uh, his wife before she died. So yeah. it's not like, you know, the uncle was sitting at a bar and saw Morgan Freeman was like, hey, do you want to take some money with me? You know, yeah, they yeah. seem like they've been friends for quite a while. Now, it was basically Jason Statham and The Rock in Fast and Furious becoming buddies in the same style. <laughs> They're like, you know, you judged me before you knew me. Now you know me. We can be friends. That's what happened with yeah, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. So and if, you want, if you want to say that, if you want to say <laughs> that Morgan Freeman and Christian Slater paved the way for The Rock and Jason Statham to <laughs> to make Hobbs and uh, whatever the other guy's name is movie, then I'll take that. What is it? It's uh, you right. It's Hobbs and something. I I don't remember. I want to say Chelios, uh, but that's Crank. We can we can stick with that, <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Chelios. Let's see, uh, Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Hobbs and Shaw. Thank you. Yeah, he's gonna drive me crazy. But yeah, the, uh, so yeah, so they crash the armored truck, and they're getting into the water. Yeah. Into the water, they're getting flooded out, and the guys show up, and they're 
about to rob him. The young guy who Morgan Freeman promised to always protect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Starts shooting and ends up killing Kenny. the uncle. Yeah, and, Kenny the dumb guy. Kenny, Kenny the, the dumb guy, guy wasn't there, then everything would have went perfectly. Yeah, it would have been smooth. But then <laughs> so this was so <laughs> the uncle dies and uh Christian Slater grabs the money and hides. Now this is one of the first things that everyone was just on board for. Morgan Freeman's like he hid the money that way he knows that he could stay alive then the cops have the exact same reasoning and christian slater has the exact same reasoning later on in the movie he's like yeah i hid the money so they would would keep me alive to find it and like right it's just a crazy thing to go through and just give your characters all the exact same motivation without them having to consider or learn anything new they're just like yeah no we everyone knows the move is when you're being held hostage, hide the money and they'll try to keep you alive. And then it's just like, well, the teacher, the teacher did say, or he's going to try and take the money for himself. He did say that, but that, that didn't go anywhere. I'm just saying, but the teacher did point that out. Yeah. And Morgan Freeman was like, nah, he's trying to stay alive. Yeah. But, uh, cause Morgan Freeman was one step ahead, but Christian Slater was one step ahead. <laughs> but, the cops were also one time. step ahead, but Morgan Freeman was a step ahead of them, who was also a step ahead of Christian Slater. It's, it's just dumb, man. <laughs> it's so bad. They all had the same personality, too. Did you notice that? None of them had Yeah, any. no, I... <laughs> None of them. I tried. <laughs> they were all <laughs> just the writer. They all had the yeah. writer's voice, and uh, <laughs> that stands out so hard. So he hides the money. Yeah. And uh, he's 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 trying to run away, and it just so happens <clears throat> he sees these guys, and they meet. They like they see each other's eyes from across the rain in the dark. Nothing, and then they start chasing him. The so the the bad guys see him, and they start chasing him, right? And they chase him into the school. Yeah, yeah, and the, the school scene. Yeah, this is after they steal all the boats from and the jet skis. Oh yeah and uh oh yeah they're like the, oh, let's take the nice one no no kenny the dumb guy was like hey let's take this car too oh is it a car it's like i thought he yeah, wanted was, like no, a no, super jet oh well f well first he when when the when the scene first starts and he's like hey we should take this car too and then he was like what and then he moved on to the bigger boat gotcha and he when morgan Freeman was like no we need it we're not going to take the bigger boat either well, that would have been the move. Take the big boat. Take the bigger boat. Yeah, because they kept falling out of the little boat. They kept ricking it in all <laughs> over the place and water sloshing into their boats. If they'd taken the bigger boat and the jet skis, then they could have had like a, you know, a forward operating base and been able to uh, actually yeah. coordinate some attacks. But they're just, just getting rained on the whole time. I don't think that they thought they were going to be in the water for that much longer. They're going to grab this guy. They're going to get the bang and get out of there. Yeah. Well, Christian Slater went, so they're in the school. They're chasing him around. He ends up taking Kenny out at one point, gets on the jet ski and uh, just <laughs> don't, drives. Don't forget. Well, he just, don't forget. Watch your step. Remember he was standing on the stairs and he said, watch your step. He moves out of the way. Kenny hits the stairs because they're submerged <laughs> underwater. And he goes flying into, he goes it's, flying into, uh, uh, what is it? The, uh, the trophy case. There's, there's nothing that makes Slater me says, watch step. happier than that <laughs> thing. Just dying. That whole punny action hero thing, like from the eighties uh -huh. and nineties. I'm so glad that that has gone away. It's so bad. Now, I mean, now it's hey, uh, it's been replaced with brooding and you know drug abuse and all right. that stuff. So it's not like it's it's gone in a better, more creative direction. But that brightness right. is it's hard to, to stomach now. No, you just need to accept it and and love it, especially in this movie, because <laughs> all the ones that I try, all the ones that I can remember, I'm going to point out. I'm going to interrupt you and say, watch your step, and then boom, in, <laughs> into the case. Well, so he gets the jet ski and just drives it mm -hmm. straight at the other jet ski. And he's got his hat tipped down trying to hide himself. There's only two <laughs> jet skis. 
who is he trying to hide from? He's like, maybe right. this is someone else's jet ski. They're not going to notice me. I'm in my Marvel superhero disguise. And the guy obviously no, recognizes him. him. And then they start chasing him again. Well, he, well, he took he took Kenny's jacket and hat. And the, and when he was trying to drive past him, the, the black guy, I don't know his name, he said, hey, did you find him? And then he's like, wait a minute. He's over here. He's <laughs> over here. <laughs> it's so dumb. So it fooled him for like half a second. Yeah. Before he realized it wasn't Kenny. Oh man, this. Uh, and so he from there, from here, he gets to the police station. Right? There's nothing really that happens important from. Or no, he gets to the. Yeah. Yeah, he gets to the church. I'm sorry. He gets to the church. Yeah, he gets to the church. Yeah. And that's when he's sneaking around, and she just hits him in the face with a crucifix, which is without min- even saying a word, just bam. Yeah. So this is Minnie Driver. She is the, the actress. Yeah. She looks like mm-hmm. a different person now. Like obviously she's 20 she years older. But like I was like, right. that sort of looks like Minnie Driver. Like I would have, mm-hmm. if I would have seen it, I'm like, oh, maybe that's her cousin. Like they're close enough to where you could see the resemblance, but not not to the point where you think it's the same person. Like my wife didn't even believe me when I told her that was Minnie Driver. She's like, no, that's not. That's well. someone else. But uh, <laughs> it it threw me the, off. But uh, the thing that the thing that got me about the jail scene, okay. They're talking about him being a looter, and he's like, "I'm not a looter." Yeah. And then, well, they like, they cut what... away. So he goes, "I'm not a yeah. looter," and they cut away, and they come back, and they're still talking about it. He's like, "I already told you, I'm not a looter." <laughs> like he's yeah, just well, throwing a tantrum. Well, well, the thing about it though is, I was going to mention that, like, it cuts away. I forget what the guys are doing at the school. Then it comes back, and they're all in the cell with him. So, like, he says, "I'm not a looter." A little bit of time passes, and they just trust it. Like they're all in the cell with him, and they're bringing him a cup of coffee before he takes off Kenny's jacket yeah. to show that he worked for, um, the, the armored truck whatever company. the armor, yeah, the armored truck. They gave yeah. a lot of credit towards working for an armored truck company to being one a hero, <laughs> two being respected in like the community. You know, like I, the nothing against heroes. people who drive armored trucks. But it's kind of reminded me of Unbreakable with him being a security guard and then be like, wow, you want to protect people and you're special for this. No, it's just kind of a job you get when you can't be make it as a police officer. You know, like this is your goal. You're trying to be a cop <laughs> oh and you you can't get there. And so you, you do this for a while and you try to be a cop again later on for the next test. You know what well, I mean? It's you, like, you, a, know, you know, that's what I do for a living, right? You're a security guard? Yeah. Okay. For armored truck guy. <laughs> Are you? No, I remember no. I'm a realtor. No, I know. Well, I know, but you're not a good realtor, so I figure you gotta hey, you gotta fill it I'm out the here. Best realtor. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the armored truck guy of the real estate <laughs> industry. <laughs> you deliver the houses in armored trucks. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like it, they give him a lot of like. Mm-hmm. So you know, in Rambo, right? He's a Vietnam vet. And he comes mm-hmm. back and they're like, oh, he's a vet. This is why he can do all this stuff. In this movie, they're like, oh, he drives armored trucks. This is why he's capable of doing all this stuff. And it just doesn't compute. And and his background is nothing has worked out in his life up until this point. Yeah. Because he was giving his uncle a hard time at the beginning of the movie. He's like, this job sucks and I can't <laughs> believe I'm doing this. I'm, I was supposed to be a contender. I was supposed to be a contender. And then... He became a contender. Yeah. He just needed the opportunity. He just needed a it's rise true. to the occasion. It, it? He just needed one. Uh, I'm not even going to try and do the, the Eminem thing. Just one shot. <laughs> one shot. Um, but, <laughs> so, yeah, he, he takes off his coat, shows that he's wearing the uniform, and they're like, all right, well, this guy's trustworthy now. Which, again, these cops are the bad guys. And they're like. Not yet. <laughs> yeah but in in the reality of this world they're the bad guys right they're intending to take this money at this point they're all on the same page about getting this money i don't think so not yet mm, i don't know i, I, I feel like I, I don't feel I, I i i don't think that they were all on board with it and w- and we can talk about that scene when we get there or if we want to talk about it now the one guy that was like the dirt bag of the three cops, not Randy Quaid. He was the leader. You have the dirt bag and you have the guy that's got the 
the uh, the problems, the morality problems. Yeah, there's the guy uh, who's but, in love with the girl, the guy who wants to rape the girl, yeah. and then Randy Quaid. Yeah, the, the dirtbag, when Randy Quaid starts shooting at Morgan Freeman, Christian Slater, there's like this moment where he's like, what is this? Is this happening? But he, like, There was like no, dis- no discussion before that went down. I, to me, it felt like, oh, I didn't know we were going this far with it. I didn't think we were going to kill anyone to take the money. And it was not, not oh, we're the bad guys now. It was like, this wasn't what we agreed to do. We were just going to get the money, and that was going to be it. Right. Um, that's how I took it, at least. But there was no, again, there was no, like, uh, exposition is terrible, right? When you well, just, when- you drive a story with just a character thrown in a line. But, right. Well, later on in the <clears throat> film, though, okay, tell me what your thoughts on what the film based off of what you, yes, it's a film. Uh, it lost a lot of money. Uh, but <laughs> later on in the film, um, Randy Quaid looks at the dirtbag and said, you locked him in. And there was like this moment where a dirtbag felt bad that he had killed this guy because he didn't trust him. And then they actually went back to the police station to see if they could save him. Yeah. So I agree. I, the, their actions betray their their intentions because right. i think for them to all be on board with stealing this money they had to be the bad guys before they had the opportunity they had to have at least some conversation at some point being on the same page being dirty cops taking advantage cuz betty white betty white talks about i didn't vote for you you're not my sheriff type of thing how he's right. always been damaging to the 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 city or the the county and uh right. they establish he's always been a bad guy then they take the turn and become the bad guys but there's no moment where they decide or convince the 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 third cop you're gonna do this with us so that leads right, me okay. yeah that leads me to believe they had to be on on board before they started before the movie takes place like on a- on a, like on a mental standpoint where like, yeah, we're dirt bags. Because if you remember at the very beginning of the movie, when the mayor's leaving, uh, he was like, Oh, the town should have voted for you. And then the, the, the cop with the morality issues was like, well, it was your fault that, that no one voted for him. Yeah. So, um, so maybe the dirt bag cop on a, on a morality level was already on, on par with Randy Quaid's character. Yeah. Which and I love Randy Quaid, by the way, I was excited to see him in this. And then I was so disappointed that he was actually in this at the end of it. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Cause Randy Quaid is great. <laughs> Randy Quaid is the best. I like Morgan Freeman. I like Christian Slater, but they make crazy movies. I felt right. like Randy Quaid felt a little out of place in this. Like I felt like Randy Quaid was trying and I felt like Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman both knew, like, this is dumb. <laughs> I don't know. He did see Jesus. He did see Jesus. <laughs> and so the, one of the, the scene in the cell, the water, that's okay. one of the water rising scenes that right. make no sense. Like, nothing else is flooding this quickly, but then the water just starts rising, you know, like super fast an inch a second maybe like yeah. i don't even know like it's so quick and he's panicking trying to get out then that tree comes flying or the telephone pole comes flying through the window and busts the door and i was like oh wow that was convenient but they didn't even use that to get him out <laughs> like i thought for right. sure i was like oh that's how he's gonna get out the telephone pole broke him out which would be consistent with how they resolve issues in this movie just magic right. takes place. The, like I said, the water drives the story. And, uh, but then he grabs a flashlight, takes apart the top and bottom and starts using it as a, um, a snorkel to mm-hmm. help protect himself. And he's in there using the snorkel, trying to survive. And mini driver shows up with her little Swiss army knife and the slowest unscrewing <laughs> scene I've ever seen in any movie <laughs> takes place. It takes her, two minutes he's just sitting there with a snorkel all you see is his eyes that's the only acting he can do is just his eyeballs wide (laughs) underwater with a snorkel and going back from that to her unscrewing for it had to be two minutes long just to build tension you're like okay i know he's gonna get out there's no question that he's gonna get out 
and she just keeps had, doing it, keeps doing had, it, keeps they doing it. They had to show the water slowly rise up over his little snorkel. But then it stops. It gets to the point where it, it would have killed him had she not saved him. And then she frees him and the water's like, all right, I guess you guys win this one. There's exactly enough water to kill him. And then it just stops flooding. Because the water came out of the dam and we're good from there. But the wasn't the dam after that part? The dam happened when... Well, the dam happened three times in the flick. Okay. I remember um, he specifically really, he when, when she is in the house on the bottom floor. Right. That's when the dam breaks. Yeah. And so right, right it, prior to uh, the water rising up in the gas station, it shows the cop or not the cop, the, uh, the redneck. Uh, he's sitting on the toilet <laughs> and the water hits his feet and he's like, Oh crap. And yeah. then he goes and releses the, <laughs> that the water. Redneck. That character was so unnecessary. There was already oh, so was many, it? there was already so many characters in this movie and they're like, let's add a third one. Who's a hunter because hunting yeah. really helps prepare you for being in a, a water yeah. flood. Randy Quaid was like, Hey, have you ever been hunting with this dude? He knows what to do. Now yeah. go around there and get shot at <laughs> and miss all of your bullets. They just knew cause he was, he was just evil. He didn't care about anyone. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't, there's nothing, this movie is terrible, <laughs> so bad, I don't even know what to say about it. They, I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's uh, all I'm, that, Betty White, this conversation. <laughs> Betty White was funny to be in this, although she felt yeah. so out of place. Like Both of them did, her and the old guy. Yeah, um, they, I, they did it just for that one line where he's like, when he saves her and he's rolling back and she's complaining to him, Yeah, and he's like, I'm going to take you back and tell them to shoot you or to shoot me, but I don't care. Either one's good with me. <laughs> yeah. That was a great scene. That is a funny you, line, but made you laugh. the buildup for it all was yeah. unnecessary. Like I would have rather not had that line in also, also not have any of the lines in and just watch rain fall down from the sky instead of watching this movie. Like that would be or more just- enjoyable. Or just extend the mini driver scene where she's unscrewing this. That, yeah. Just extend that 30 to 40 more seconds. <laughs> would have been good. 30 to 40 more minutes. <laughs> Cut out some of the dialogue more, more unscrewing. Because they bring that back. They establish that they she did. has. <laughs> she's switch. really good at unscrewing. <laughs> but she's not good uh, at it. Was a flathead. <laughs> she, she kept herself alive <clears throat> and kept Christmas Slayer alive. That is true. But she was so slow. Right. But, uh, yeah, they used uh, that Swiss Army knife like four times in this movie. They did. Yeah. And it was all by her, and she saved somebody's life every time that she used it. Well, not the one guy. She stabs the one guy in the back of the neck. She's, she saves her own she life. She saves her, her own life. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. he was going to leave her there after he, I guess, well, we can get to that scene where I guess the dude was trying to do some. He, some, he was going to rape her. Like, that's what. Well, yeah, he was going to rape her, but like he was trying to role play with her. He was like, and then I came home and I was like, oh, she's just laying there. And she's like, leave me alone. Okay. And then was that what was happening? Because I was a little confused because I didn't know any of the characters' names. I didn't, again, like I said. I, don't, I still don't, I don't know any of the characters' names either. I was like not emotionally invested in this at all. As soon as it I started. Literally I, thought like, it was Bob, <laughs> I literally thought it was Bob Hoskins <laughs> in the movie and not this other guy. <laughs> um. I thought what the story he was telling her was here is what I'm going to tell everyone after you're dead. I showed up and you were chained up and like, do you know what I'm saying? Like he, he's like, yeah. this is how I'm going to get away with what I'm about to do to you that I showed up and this had already happened. Mm. I th- it could be, it could have been that, but I took it as role play because when he, when he, chained her up right uh-huh. he started talking he started talking in like a different tone and then he stopped and he was like oh and i saw you just sitting there and she was like i don't want to be a part of your sick fantasy yeah. and then like he took his belt off or, or his gun off and then put himself in between her arms and they started talking again yeah like that's part of the story that he was gotcha. he could have been that, that could have been what he was doing yeah but for all these years, I'd been—I thought that he was trying to role play with her, mm. and she was like, "I, 
because you know there's people out there that use that to get off on whatever yeah uh, and uh and i just thought that that's what he was doing well it's, it's something that's come up uh, on the podcast a couple times and mm-hmm. when they do so using rape as a a um like a moment in a movie i always feel like really disconnected from it like it always kind of like sets me off in a bad way i'm like right. because it feels like a right. cheap tool to like get a visceral response there's right. no there's no like justification like I, and i'm saying this knowing that there's no justification for rape in reality in the real world there's no like it's not like oh it's earned or it's you know makes sense right it's a terrible horrible thing that happens and it it does happen and it, it doesn't make sense but using that in a movie feels abusive to the audience because they're like let's just uh, let's just attack them to get them to feel emotional so they feel connected to the story and it, it's like right. the, the same with kids dying the same with puppies dying like all these things are just meant to get a like a, a strong emotional response that if it's not earned because I, I wouldn't say rape is never allowed in movies or it shouldn't be in movies at all or anything like that. But it has to be, you know, it's, you know how like in Olympic high diving, there's a, a score limit you can get. Like this attempt is going to be this much. That's what rape is, right? Like that's, you put that in there. You really have to hit that perfect or you felt completely. And this felt so out of place to me. Well, for me, like I didn't, I didn't think that it was, it was going that direction. I don't think it was used in the way that you just described. Uh-huh. I think that uh, it was more, it was more of a point where this character is a dirt bag, right? Yeah. And we need, we need to know that he's a dirt bag one last time before the the lady kills him. Yeah. So the uh, way the, the female kills him. The way I took it was it was justification for her stabbing him in the back of the neck because you you can't have, so that's a, that's a brutal, brutal thing, a brutal way to kill someone, right? Like that's, that's Mm -hmm. an intense uh, image to see someone do. So you have to just suppose that with something also terrible. And so they wanted her to stab him, but they're like, we got to figure out a justification for this because if he, handcuffed her and then she brutally stabs him you're gonna now feel like oh she's kind of unhinged even though he kidnapped her and you know chained her up she's like too far gone like too aggressive against what's happening to her well and i and i think possibly now that we're talking about this scene and probably the most the best acting in this entire film mm-hmm. was probably portrayed by her because when he, when she, when he's underneath, when he's between her arms, yeah. like she just didn't stab him. There was like this moment where her hand was shaking and like, she was like, eh. you yeah. know, it wasn't just a, he's, he's in my zone. So now I can just stab him. There was yeah. like this moment where she was like, okay, I have to stab him. If I don't, then I'm going to not only be, I'm, I'm ultimately going to die. But before I die, this is, terrific guy is gonna this dirt bag's gonna get me yeah i would agree with you that she was probably the best actor until that final <laughs> freeze frame on her face <laughs> that was the director that was all in editing <laughs> but <laughs> so that was last that was the last day of filming where she was probably like uh, even though you know i know that they don't shoot in order but let's just pretend that it was sure. or like <laughs> she's she's like this and she's like finally this movie is over with like, <laughs> like I can go back to doing well. That's good a, movies. That's the audience's reaction. It's like, oh, it's yeah. done. We're good. We can leave. <laughs> um, but yeah, so she right. she ends up murdering him. Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman end up uh, teaming up after Morgan. Uh, so Christian Slater kills Morgan Freeman's friends. Morgan Freeman. Oh, hold, and, on, hold on. Let's not bypass. <laughs> let's not bypass. I'm trying to the get death. I'm trying to bypass all of this. No, no, don't bypass the death of Kenny, okay? All right. Don't bypass the death of Kenny. Kenny is the unsung hero of this movie. <laughs> All right. If it's not for if it's not for Kenny, then everything goes correctly and everyone's rich at the end of the movie except for Christian Slater. So why don't you and he does break down Kenny's death for me? Kenny's death, okay. So um I think it was right after um Mimi Driver, I don't know her name, okay. Karen. That's her name, Karen. 
because that cop was screaming in earlier, Karen! Um, Karen breaks out Christian Slater's uh, character, yeah. and Kenny sees them, and he jumps and uh, well, no, there's electricity that's about to go through the water. Yes, yeah. And they notice this, and the, Which the Mimi drivers is a Karen terrible gets scene. To safety. They climb up, so they're like, "Oh no!" You see the the power <laughs> like sparking on the telephone pole, the transformer, <laughs> and the water's raising yeah. up to it. So they climb up on this thing. They're like, "Oh, whew, we're safe." Oh no, this is also metal. And then they have to like shimmy across the second thing. And it's just like. Why not just let the characters know from the beginning? Not like there's no reason for that beat of like, phew, we made it. Oh no, we're not actually yeah. safe because it doesn't add suspense. It just no. it just makes like an awkward uh, an awkward well, transition. It, it, it gives the <clears throat> it gives the moment for Kenny to show up and ruin everything. Yeah. Where speaking of uh, showing up and ruining everything, Breen's a flame is here, and he said, "What's up, Breen's a flame is in here. He is here. Whoa." Just kidding. He's supposed, to be doing a, he's, he's supposed to be doing a podcast right now. What is he doing in ours? I don't know. What are you doing in ours, Brian's? I'm just kidding. Brian's Brian's is awesome. No, I know. Are we? Sh- and, we're says, streaming. and we're streaming your stream. Uh-oh. We're talking about the greatest movie of all time. The worst ta- movie <laughs> ever made. <laughs> we're ta- is Hard but- Rain, which is Aaron's <laughs> favorite movie. He said multiple times. <laughs> no, it's. He's based everything, <laughs> every decision he makes is based off this movie. I believe is what you said at the when, beginning. It's true. Before I read the Bible, I watch a <laughs> five to 10 minutes of this movie to be like, how does this correlate with the Bible? Just when her unscrewing the, uh, the bolts just in the yeah. background. It's have so, you, have you so, seen it brands or whoever's in your chat? I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that anybody has seen this movie. I, I don't mean, think you, any, I don't think, I don't think you'd even heard of the movie whenever I, I suggested it to I you. had not. Yeah. Yeah. 98 was kind of, so I was 10. So this is like outside of my awareness and it is terrible. So there's no reason for me to be aware of it at this point. Right. Right. It was a bomb that, that came and went and it, it went into theaters or it left theaters as fast as it went in there. I was shocked that so this came no out in theaters. It. It, Why? It was, it started, it starred Christian Slater, who was kind of hot at the time, Morgan Freeman, who was hot at the time, and Mimi Driver, who I think was hot at the I time. I guess, but it was just so, so three, poorly done. It seemed like someone and, and anyway. who had never made a movie was like, I could bet. I bet I could do that. Because I think it was produced by Christian yeah. Slater. And uh, Was it? Yeah. And I, I think that might have been, he was just like kind of probably tired of not getting a better cut on the movies he made. He's like, let's just make our oh, own. Man. He didn't get any cut off of this movie. <laughs> I think I looked it up. Uh, I think it was made for seventy million dollars, and it only made thirty billion in the box office. Ooh, that's not good. No wonder the why there's direct- not a part two. Yeah, just, hard rain two, more rain. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should make that movie. I think we should make that movie. We should. You, but, and, you and Fred. Uh, that should be your next. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I looked up. I looked up, I just clicked on the director's name. Yeah. Okay. He did a movie. He did. I, I'm, I'm assuming that this is a movie. I don't want to click on it, but his first legitimate movie was hard rain in 1998. Okay. And then that after that, he did a whole bunch of, uh, TV series. He actually did two episodes of band of brothers, which just got his, his, uh, That's respect a, level up a yeah. lot more. Which one did it say? He did, uh, uh, points and quarantine. Okay. So, points. but yeah, he did those two episodes. So, wow, that's a lot. And then he's just done a ton of TV. I a wonder, ton of TV. I wonder, it must have been pickup, right? Because uh, Spielberg directed the entire thing. He, no, he didn't. Really? No, every episode, every episode somebody different, mm. except for, I guess, two episodes was directed. So, uh, Tom Hanks did, he directed an episode. I guess they just um, produced it then. Yeah, him and him and Spielberg produced it, and um, and they got directors to do all all ten episodes. Yeah, um, but because I love that series, Ben of Brothers is fantastic. I think. Yeah. I, I think uh, Saving Private Ryan is better. It's Ben of Brothers gets a little bloated, especially towards the end, but mm-hmm. uh, it, it's so good. 
So let's talk about something better than Band of Brothers yeah. and Hard Sam Brother Ryan. You're, let's you're go back to Hard Rain. <laughs> breaking down uh, Kenny's death before. So so our two heroes. Uh, so the meaning our Karen gets over to the windowsill. She's safe. She's not on metal anymore. Yeah. And Christian Slater is about to uh, jump over and Kenny, you know, in those movie moments where you don't hear a jet ski driving straight at you, <laughs> uh, he comes out of nowhere, spears Christian Slater in the water. Spears like and, WWE edge spears, yeah. right? Yeah, spears him. And by the way, I just looked it up. His name is Tom. So Karen and Tom. Um, Christian Slater's so, Tom. Yeah, Christian Slater's Tom. I wonder why heroes in the 90s had such generic names. Well, Morgan Freeman's name was Jim. But like, so here, here are the names. Here are the names. Mm-hmm. See, the, they don't even get last names. <clears throat> it's Jim. Oh, nice. It's Tom. It's Sheriff Mike Collins. So yep. Randy, Craig, Randy Quaid gets a full name. Then you have Karen, Uncle Charlie, yeah, Kenny. Uncle Charlie. Uh, yeah. uh, Ray, Phil, Hank. What do you, you know, need? All these generic. You don't need backstory. Dude, There's no reason for the, backstory in movies. There's no reason for developing a character. You just they're the, just a device to say words. The mayor's name was Mayor. Of course, Mayor Mayor. I hope his actual no, name no, was no, Mayor. Nah, that'd be hilarious if it was. But now it just says Mayor and Mayor's wife. All right, we'll kill Kenny already. Kenny. Oh my God. They killed Kenny. Um, so he, he spears, um, Tom into the water Yeah, and Karen is screaming. It's about electricity, you know, uh, uh, you know, electrocute both of you. And he's not listening. And there's this epic moment that I completely forgot about where Christian Slater water. And then he does like this super Aquaman <laughs> uppercut (laughs) and knocks Kenny not out, but enough away from him for him to be able to get away to, to climb up and get away. But I I completely forgot about the, um, about the Aquaman uppercut that made me laugh really hard. It was like, bam, (laughs) and uh, he gets away. Kenny climbs up on the metal. um, I don't know, metal antenna. I don't even know what to call what he climbed up on. Yeah, I don't know at, what that uh, was. It's like a scaffolding almost, but it was not like it was just like yeah. you, you you know what it looks like. It was a killing, is, it was a killing device. Yeah, it was it, a killing device. It looks like the <laughs> scaffolding you use at a like a concert for lights, like lighting yeah. scaffolding or whatever you'd call that. Like, there's not really yeah, a in reason the of for, town somewhere. It, for it to be where it was, other than it's there to kill Kenny. They probably used it Kenny. for their own lighting, which. <laughs> Kill was Kenny. terrible <laughs> and then they <laughs> threw it in there well and what's crazy about it is like i forgot that kenny survived it that's what made that's what made it even worse is he actually survived it well i would and, i question uh, how lethal electricity is from that distance because i know i know water will conduct right it'll transfer right. electricity but like how far because you that transformer is coming straight from the the city, right? So that that's the most power you're gonna get out of anything. Right. Like that's your. Well, that, don't question this movie, by the way. <laughs> oh my bad. And so it's like <laughs> I don't know what the range. Like, does it just kill everything that's in the water? Does it go I only guess. to a radius? Like, because electricity will just keep traveling when it's you know like why it works right. in a wire across miles and miles. So everything is dead now i don't know why did it stop what what switched it off there's no kenny's kenny's poor body kenny's poor body was the the breaker switch (laughs) it hit it and came out of his ears (laughs) (laughs) oh man but uh yes kenny kenny is almost dead and there that's the other thing christian slater is trying to save him he's like get off of that get off of that it's made out of metal and I was like, why are you trying to save this guy? You don't need to be that good of a person to... to you have to cheer for him, bro. have to cheer <laughs> for him. That, it's just... Because, that, again, that's why the movie had that guy try to rape Minnie Driver was so that she had a justification for killing him to the right. audience. And, cause, and that's why Christian Slater had to try to save the guy, even though the guy is actively trying to kill him. He's like, no, no, get off. Come here, grab my hand. I'll help you. Like, it's just crazy. 
Yeah, but that hasn't been. He probably wasn't the first character to do that, and for sure hasn't been the last character. Oh no! To try but, to save. Yeah. No, no, it's definitely not the first. It's just bad writing. It's bad right. justification for actions and having bad motivations. So Kenny's dead. Yeah. Morgan Freeman, the bad guy of the movie, is sad. Bad guy at the bad guy of the movie right at this present moment. He's sad. He yeah. was supposed to take care of. He was supposed to take care of Kenny. What he a told, terrible line! He, he he promised his dad that he would always no, take care of him. <laughs> it was just like, was his dad? Why throw this in here? Like, just be. If you want him to be sad, okay, I get it. Maybe he was his friend. Maybe they're connected. He could have been like, I don't know why I brought him. That was a mistake. But it didn't need here. any extra weight of like, I promised no. I would always take care of him. No, the twist, the twist that they shouldn't or that they didn't put into the movie was Uncle Phil or what was his name? Uncle, Uncle whatever. Kevin. Uncle, Uncle Kevin. Uncle Kevin. Was the, or Uncle Phil's Uncle, from uh, uh, Fresh LA. Prince of Bel-Air. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, yeah. Yeah. So Uncle Charlie. No, his name is Uncle Char- Charlie. Yeah, Uncle, Uncle Charlie was Kenny's dad and Christian Slater was trying to kill his or trying to save his cousin that's the twist that they didn't put in there but he, so he, so, he would have known right he would have been aware I, of it i'm just and I'm then just, then the son would have actually killed the dad <laughs> it's not the way it works aaron only Dang logic it, i'm out of this podcast i'm out of here <laughs> finish finish this great movie on your own oh man i'm i'm ready we've been talking about this for an hour <laughs> So let's wrap this up. Let's then. wrap this up. They they end up splitting up. The yeah, they go to the grave scene. They find the money, and mm-hmm. Kevin or Christian Slater ends up killing Morgan Freeman's team. The rest of them, they all die. No, no. Yeah, they're shooting uh, from Randy, behind. Randy Quaid kills them. Doesn't Ke- Christian Slater kill the preacher guy? Nobody. He doesn't kill anybody. He doesn't. I thought he. Sh- I thought he shot the preacher guy. No, uh, the preacher guy. No, no, no. So, so uh, they they get Christian Slater huh. and they send him down to the grave to get the money. The money's already gone, right? And he pops up and he's like, "Hey, uh, somebody already beat you to the money." And then Morgan Freeman points the gun. The preacher points the gun, and the teacher points the gun at uh, Christian Slater to kill him. Yeah. And then the cops show up from behind and kill. That's right. The preacher and the teacher. That's right. Yeah, so it's the preacher and the or it's Randy Quaid and his cops that yeah. kill him. And then Morgan Freeman sneaks out of the water like uh, everyone. Everyone can swim like Aquaman. They can go <laughs> from one spot to a hundred yards away in one breath and just so? pop up instantly. <laughs> <laughs> and Morgan well, Freeman he, does that. He takes that sneaky move and gets. You forgot the twist, though. You forgot well, the no, twist, though. The twist is coming. Because okay. he he pulls the gun on him, and there he's right. holding Christian Slater hostage, and right. then he's like, "You're gonna have to shoot him if you want to shoot me," which is a terrible line, like a terrible, right. like just try to get away, or get more behind the gravestone. Don't stand in the open with a, a human shield when you have a concrete one two inches away from you. Right. But uh, then they're like, "All right," and they start shooting at him, and then they go behind the gravestone, and he's like. These are the guys who came to help you, and they become and best then, friends. Yeah, I was gonna say, and then they look at each other and go, "Did we just become <laughs> best friends?" <laughs> because, oh. like, literally, he, like he had a gun to his head and he was going to kill him like two seconds before. Yeah, and then he used him as a meat shield, yeah. and then a second later, he's like, "Move out of the way, please! I'm trying to shoot these people." Yeah. It, if you remember, he's like, he said, he says something to the effect of please move out of the way or could you move out of the way yeah. when he's trying to shoot at shoot at the cops or shooting at them i was like oh my gosh <laughs> and so they fight for a while none of that's really that interesting or important the most well, crazy scene is morgan freeman drives a boat <laughs> over a roof and somehow is aware that the engine's gonna fall off when he hits the roof because he misses the guy with the boat the that's at the end though you skipped a whole bunch of stuff I'm, I'm trying to i'm trying to skip so much i've been trying to skip so much throughout this whole podcast and you keep stopping me <laughs> we have to talk about the cop with the morality issue oh yeah he we loves to- the girl and he dies and so morgan freeman jumps the boat 
<laughs> and the engine falls off and clips Randy Quaid, just knocks him right off his boat into the water. How did Morgan Freeman do the physics necessary to aim all that, to know what was going to happen, and to hit Randy Quaid? See, if you were paying attention, okay, <laughs> he was dri- he was driving. He was trying to surprise uh, Randy Quaid. Randy Quaid was like, "Nope, you're not surprising me." He shoots the boat. Yeah, the boat somehow. I don't know how boats work as far as like the the uh, the steering wheel, but somehow he shoots and it breaks the steering wheel. Yeah. And so you see the steering wheel starts spinning. So Morgan Freeman no longer has control of this boat, and it goes up. Which again, Randy Quaid was he, shooting from here. He, he, he was puts shooting it this way, full throttle so into the house. Mm-hmm. Yes, he's like this. I don't. Here's my plan. I'm going right around Quaid with this boat. I don't think that. I don't think his plan was to hit hit Randy Quaid. I think his plan was to jump the boat so he didn't go through the roof. But why didn't he jump off the boat? Why, like, because if you're if you're in a boat and there's a house and it's a ramp. Your options are jump out of the boat into the water, which is not going to feel good, granted, or <laughs> slam into a house. <laughs> like you or fly through the air like Superman. Or fly of through the air you're like Superman. Go with Superman. I guess. I yeah, guess that's fly. true. But so Randy Quaid, we think, is dead, and everyone thinks he's dead. Relaxes. Everybody no, relaxes. But nobody saw what happened, right? So Morgan Freeman is on top of Randy Quaid in the boat, can't see him. Christian Slater is on the opposite side of the house. Can't see him. Minnie Driver is in a boat laying down. Can't see him. Everyone's like, whew, we're good. Randy Quaid could have easily have just hopped out of the boat when he saw the boat coming. There should have been no reason for them to relax. They should have been like, where is he? Did he get hit? Did he die? Is he, what's going on? Why don't we see him? Why isn't he floating somewhere? He's still a threat. Turns out he was pops up to kill Minnie Driver with a gun. She pulls a gun on him, doesn't have a bullet. And then Christian Slater and Morgan Freeman from 600 yards away with pistols in heavy, hard rain, just blast them into smithereens. So did you pay attention to the way that they were holding their guns? So uh, Christian Slater, let me let me make sure I'm looking at it right. So Christian Slater is like this, right? Because he's, he's on the boat and he's doing yeah. this, yep. right? Morgan Freeman has the gun underneath his shoulder like this, shooting like this. Yeah. And 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 all the bullets hit right on the money. Yep. So he's right shooting, on the money. And- <laughs> Christian Slater shooting with his left hand, right? Mm-hmm. And, and I assume he's right-handed because 90% of people are, whatever it is. Right. And he's accurate. Morgan Freeman is shooting under his arm, like you said, and he's accurate. Yeah. But also, that gun is right next to Christian Slater's head. I don't know if you've ever had a gun go off next to your ear, but it's not a fun experience. Right. And he would a- <laughs> it would destroy his earring. And also, it throws your equilibrium off, so you can't aim anymore. But they're, well, they're snipers with these guns that shouldn't be shooting bullets because I don't know, especially in the 90s, I don't know how waterproof these uh, revolvers would have been for the, the shells. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's one of the things I was going to point out, even mm-hmm. though we skipped the entire church fighting scene, which we don't have to go back and talk about. But so when the cops turn on everybody, right? Yeah. Christian Slater swims over to the preacher, takes the gun out of his hand, right? The gun that is in the preacher's hand is a six shooter. Yeah. Christian Slater spends the rest of the movie shooting that gun. He shoots a million and a half bullets. He shoots, he continuously shoots from that gun so much that like, you know, he, he hit, was it IDKFA from doom and he just got infinity bullets. <laughs> so he just, and even at the end of the movie, he probably shot six bullets into uh Randy Quaid oh, along yeah, with the, sh- along with the shooting at the um, graveyard and at the, at the church. So there was, there's all this shooting going on from this one gun with six bullets. And the offensive so. part is they did an insert shot after Randy Quaid is dead onto Morgan Freeman's gun. And it showed that it was empty. The The slide was cocked back, you know, and uh, did it really? Yeah. It, it, <laughs> it cuts into that shows that he has no more bullets. And then a, a drop of rain hits his oh. barrel and sizzles. It goes, <laughs> it's yeah. so bad. But uh, the confusing yeah. part was then Minnie Driver 
stands up in slow motion yes. with her rifle. I was, I was gonna like, and throws the rifle into the water. And I was like, yes, I was gonna bring that up. Why would you do that? What's the point of one getting rid of a weapon? Yeah, I get you don't have ammunition, but you have a weapon and you're right. throwing it at someone who potentially could have ammunition, even though you think they're dead. You've thought they're dead three other times. Don't give him a weapon that he can shoot you with if he has the bullets in his pocket. Well, the thing about that is I didn't, I didn't, even now when I watch that scene, like for one, I was like, I don't know why that scene took place, but I, I would never interpret it as she was throwing the gun at Randy Quaid. I thought she was just, just throwing the gun out of the boat in just anger. Are, like I all the guns and bullets. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. But she, where she throws it is right where Randy Quaid's body was. I don't think she was trying to hit him, but she's like, oh, I need to get rid of this. And just like gives it to the bad guy. But I'm the, done. Uh. <laughs> that scene, that imagery, that message is someone who you, you would use it for a soldier or, you know, someone who's like been conflicted about fighting and gets to the end. is like, right. I can't do this anymore. You know, I'm, I'm giving this up. I can't. Like these guns disgust me, these weapons of murder, you know, something like that. And she's just like, right. she's just, oh, oh. and then puts her head down and just gives a thumbs up. Like, I'm all right. Just give me a minute. <laughs> it's so, oh man. But uh, then we, greatest, greatest movie ever. Greatest movie ever. And uh, movie ever. Morgan Freeman is able to steal one of the bags of money off of Randy Quaid. Who's yeah. floating down the river. Right. When yes. the uh, state troopers show up. Christian Slater which, doesn't take any money. Right, which the state troopers would have saw him rowing away and would have caught up to him in two seconds because they had motors on their boats and he yes. was just rowing. He was rowing. He was rowing a <laughs> a boat that used to have a motor. So it needed a motor originally. So it's an oversized boat and he's got one oar and he's like, all right, I guess I'm going. Like, it's not a canoe. You're not going to be jetting out of there very quickly. And smiling. And smiling with a bunch yeah, of money. smile on his face. He was like, yeah. I wonder how much money was just in one of those pouches. Maybe like 50000 Probably. 100, something like that. I, I mean, guess. life-changing money for me. But it's just like not, not enough to go to Belize and live the rest of your life like Christian Slater was talking yeah. about. But, I mean, it's a good yeah. enough money to where you'd be content with your best friend's kid dying in your arms. You'd be like... <laughs> This is a good I trade. I was going to protect him. <laughs> oh. yeah. But uh, hard rain. I only came here for the money. <laughs> and Kenny, I only came here for the money. And so, Kenny, on on the podcast, we have a rating system that's a little convoluted, okay. but I I think it's the most accurate way to do okay. it. From negative okay. five being the worst movie to positive five being the okay. best movie, right? And zero being neutral completely. What would you rank this movie? Oh, okay, I would say okay. Let me give let me give you two ratings. Okay, okay. Sixteen year old, seventeen year old Aaron sneaking would have given it like theater. a pot. Yeah, thinking in the movie theater probably would have given it a positive one. Uh, more experienced Aaron, old man Aaron instead of old man Logan, old man Aaron <laughs> uh, probably gives it about like a negative. I would say probably negative two. Okay, yeah, I, I'm saying maybe negative three. Negative three is my rating because yeah. it, it's really bad. Everything they do is bad, mm -hmm. but it is fun it's to very talk 90s. about. That's why I chose it. It is. It does have redeeming qualities in having had seen it. So you can talk about how bad mm -hmm. it is. So it's not like, so like the movie, I don't know if you've ever seen it. Don't see it if you haven't, but saving Christmas by Kurt Cameron is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. <laughs> and it's not even fun to talk about. It's right, just right, so right. bad. Like that's a negative five to me. This isn't that bad. So, this isn't that punishing. Where? So let me ask you this. Yeah. So let me ask you this. Tell me some positive things about this movie. Um, about the movie, nothing. There's nothing yeah. they did really well. Yeah. Um, but being able to joke so, about it and be like, oh, can you believe they would do this or they thought this was a good idea or anything like that is what keeps it away from that negative four, negative five area. 
Okay. So here's what I think that they did positive. Um, prior to that movie, and it may be something that they do a lot now, but one of the things that I remember liking about the movie when I saw it was when they shot their guns, the camera shook. So it made you feel like you were right there, like you were right next to them pulling the triggers of the guns. Okay. Cause like now it's, a, it's like you pull the trigger and you just see them pull the do trigger. Whereas like when, when you, when you saw them shoot the guns, the camera was doing this with them. Like, bam. Do you think bam, the camera bam. operator was just scared? <laughs> or, or, may, <laughs> or, or maybe the camera was too close and the director was like holy crap that's awesome let's keep it in the movie <laughs> are they actually just shooting real bullets and the camera operator was dodging them <laughs> it's like oh get out of the way <laughs> you know seeing that i kind of want to go back and watch those two episodes of saver or not saving Private ryan of band of brothers band to of see brothers. when they're shooting does the camera shake every time they pull the trigger just to see if that was something that he still used even in, even in band of brothers. Yeah. yeah I did. That's not something that stood out to me. Um, I don't mind. I don't mind the camera being a storytelling device until they use the mm-hmm. lens. Anytime you put blood or dirt or anything onto the lens, I'm like, Oh, that's, mm-hmm. that's a terrible choice. It's one thing when you can't help it, right? Like when there's actually something that gets on there and like it, dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but when they, especially when they do it with CGI, CGI <laughs> blood on a screen makes me want to scream. It makes me, yeah. I'm just like, this is the dumbest thing you could do. Why would you do this? Why would you make it harder to see your own movie? And that's hardcore I, I just- Henry. In a nutshell, yeah, I just came up with I just came up with the movie. If you haven't seen the next movie that we should watch and talk about, have you ever seen House of the Dead by Yui Boyle? I have not. Holy shnikes! This movie. Uh, so at one point in the movie, there are zombies running, and I'm not kidding. You actually see the red dot right from uh-huh. the machine that launch that launches them in the air to make it look like they're jumping. Uh-huh. So you, you see the red light and when the zombie jumps on it, it turns green and then launches them in the air. <laughs> um, and they started and they tried to do like a matrix style feature. Yeah. yeah. So instead, instead of doing a room with like 27 cameras that go up, yeah. what they did is they built a, pl- a, cir- a circular platform uh-huh. and had their actors stand in the middle of it and a camera spin as fast as it possibly could. Yeah. And uh, there's and there's several scenes where someone is bleeding out, yeah. and every every single moment of the bleed out is CGI, and it's like nineteen or like maybe what two thousand two thousand one CGI, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was even bad back then. Yeah, it was awesome. CGI blood never never enhances you. Ha- you can do you can do CGI blood on top of practical blood and enhance it, but you can't do only CGI blood. It doesn't. Oh, okay. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think of the 300 blood? I thought that it didn't enhance the film, but I thought so, that it good. 300 is a cartoon. Right. There and, you go. And so it's, it, uh, it doesn't take away because it's the entire style. Right. Okay. And, okay. Yeah. But it, when you're trying to make it look like a real, a real thing, it's it, right. Okay. It, it's gotta be it. it practical is always going to be the way to go. In my opinion, there's, I agree. Obviously there's a lot of things like with heads exploding and stuff like that, but you still have like, uh, I'm thinking of like the departed, you still have practical effects enhancing mm-hmm. the, the CGI. Like it's not just, it's not just CGI completely, but, uh, yeah. Okay. So well, you give it a negative two hard rain. I say negative yeah, three let's give it a negative two. Yeah. and, uh, 17 year old Aaron would give it a positive two. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> nice movie. I can't even imagine liking this at the time. Like I said, well, you Terminator to... two was out. The matrix is coming out in the future. Like yeah, it's not this like, wasn't like a, it, this wasn't a, this wasn't a big budget film, right? Like if Terminator two had this kind of action in it, no one would like it because it was a big budget film. And yeah, I understand what you're saying, but, but it's, it's not, people don't consider that when they watch a movie, they don't like, Oh, this is a lower, I'm okay with lower quality because this is less, there's less invested. It's, Oh wow. This isn't as good as that other thing that I really enjoyed. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like this is this is lesser, and I'm not sure why. And I, I, mo- I would say, especially at the time, especially in the '90s, I don't think people really considered budgets. As, they did. Well, but like, they, I remember. I remember paying attention to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Do we have the interconnection that we do now? No, but we we still knew that Terminator Two cost a ton more than Hard Rain. Because when you went and saw this. You either looked in the movie or in the newspaper, or you called movie phone. You know, what I'm I saying? spent a lot of my um, a lot of my teenage years watching movies in theaters, so yeah. I was up to date. I I don't know what movie. Why well, just I mean to get the, the time? Well, no, no, what I mean, what I mean by that is, I saw the trailer for this movie in the theater, and I said, based off of this trailer, I want to watch this movie. Yeah. But I'm saying there was a moment when you and Dave were at your house or at his house, and you're like, "What do you guys? Want, what do you want to do today?" Oh, hard rain is out. What time is it playing? I don't know. Let's call movie phone, and then you have to sit there and listen for ten minutes while it just yeah. runs through, you know, every movie and every time and at every theater. Oh man, the '90s were the best. Moviephone.com, <laughs> yeah. With uh, what was it? Uh, modems. With the noise, <laughs> and then you know you're right in the, you're right in the middle of playing like Doom with your friends or StarCraft One, and then yeah. your mom picks up the phone and you hear it kills it. Hey, uh, what's going on in here? And then <laughs> oh man! But uh, yeah, uh, if I sorry for not introducing you before <laughs> when we started, I should have I should have done it. But uh, fire resistant podcast. No, I didn't. I'm a terrible host. Uh, do, I get to re- do, 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 I, do I get to re-say my name? Oh, yeah. You should do that, huh? I, okay. Man, I was off me. my game today. But, tell uh, me. You can, edit, you can edit this together. So we can do like a long pause, and then you can say, uh, hi, this is blah, 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 and this is Fire Resident Podcast, and then let's talk about the movie, and then <laughs> put it at the beginning of the podcast, and no one will know anything. That's. I'm just gonna put you saying that at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, do you want me to do my fire resistant podcast thing? Sure. Fire resistant podcast. <laughs> but yeah. So if you guys haven't followed Aaron and Fred on the fire resistant podcast on Twitch on YouTube, you need to go check them out. They're also on Twitter. But Aaron doesn't really know how Twitter works, so it's probably then vote for Blade already. <laughs> You're not representing. Did. did you do it? I did when I responded to you. I said Blade. That's you, all I needed no, to do. Was respond you have to, to click on it. You got zero percent. <laughs> you're not representing Wesley Snipes fairly, and then you're calling me fake news. You are fake news. It's everyone's voting for Blade, but you're changing the results because you don't want to be wrong. <laughs> that would be Twitter. I can't. I have no control over the results. <laughs> Either Twitter's trying to suppress the truth. Or you've just they do it all wrong. the time with Donald Trump, right? Yeah, I guess so. But so now uh, they're trying to suppress the now they're trying to suppress the the truth for yeah, Aaron of Blade. And Blade. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so follow them, follow them everywhere you can find them, and uh, I think we'll be back at some point. Definitely come back well, on, right? I will, I will always say thank you for letting me come on here and have fun with you and let me uh, pick the movie this time. And Taylor, Oof, thank never you. Never again. Don't worry, listeners. <laughs> Never again, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor, if you're if you're listening to this, thank you for letting me sit in your chair this week, and hopefully one of these times, all three of us can be here and do it. Oh, I think it'll be fun. That would be a nightmare. Yeah, because oh. you, you would have two people. You would actually have two people on your podcast. I know what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> but oh man, so this is the last time Aaron's on the show. But thanks Bye, for coming, everybody. Thanks. <laughs> but uh, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, do all that stuff. Go vote for me on Patreon. I'm still going to lose this month. I have about two hours to get two more votes if I want to make it. But uh, yeah, I, what I happens don't if think you tie. Um, we, so originally a tie was going to be, we would rotate. So we, we set it up the first month, a tie. I lose the second month, a tie. He loses. I don't know what month this would fall onto, but I would push really hard that he needs to pay a punishment if we tie because I've done 13 out of 14 so far. So let me ask you this. Okay. I, I, I did the Patreon so that way yep. you could get a vote. So if I increase my money from one to let's say three, does that give you three votes? No, it's per person. No. 
Yeah. Dang it. Okay. Because I got, I actually have more money coming in than he does, but he's got more oh. votes than I do. But that was the okay. that was the deal we made. That per person per vote is what we would go it off of. Okay. Cool. Well, it sounds like your your daughter's trying to get your attention. Yeah, she's so. pounding on my door. But uh, yeah, <laughs> daddy, so, daddy. <laughs> she's actually That's saying. I started laughing. She's saying mommy, which is the crazy part. Oh, is she? I thought I heard her say daddy. <laughs> no, she's saying she's looking for her mom. I don't know. I don't know why she's looking here for her mom. But uh, I should go figure out what's <laughs> going on. Yeah. Um, Scream but, yeah. at her. Be like, "There's no mommy here." <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she. This is outside of movies, but the other day my three-year-old was talking to my or no, my five-year-old was talking to my two-year-old, and she was saying, "Mom is dead. She died." And I was like, "What are you oh, no. telling her?" She's like, "Nothing. We're just playing a game." Mom is dead. I was like, "Stop <laughs> it now." <laughs> she's oh, she's basically gosh. the kid from the Prodigy. As well. Wow. Okay. Well, then we know how movie's gonna end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but oh i i have like a, a real quick similar story tonight i was sitting next to my daughter uh who is three yeah. and we were watching uh, young justice okay. and she just looked at me and she said she said when i die how do i get to heaven and i was like oh man what kind of question is this at three years yeah. old how am i answering this question <laughs> now so yeah it was it was pretty crazy it's crazy what goes to their heads yeah well because she so her her great grandmother passed away a couple of years ago and so she's been like figuring that out and what all that means mm. and so that's it's always a, a heavy topic for or like a right. not a heavy topic but like a trying to figure out the boundaries of who, topic, yeah. who, who's dead and who's not dead and i'm like your mom's not dead she's like but my grandma is yes but that doesn't doesn't work out the same anyways doesn't matter <laughs> kids and death are fun <laughs> <laughs> but yeah we'll be uh we'll be back sometime me and taylor should be back this weekend and uh yeah thanks for listening